All right, guys, we are going to finish your uh, AP review on integrals. So we're going to pick up where we left off. Whoop, we just had finished this guy. Moving on to the next one. Okay, so it says consider the differential equation dy dx equals 3x squared over e to the 2y. So first thing it asks me to do is to find the solution. So remember for the solution, anytime I see it like this, I know I'm going to have to separate variables first. Okay, so if I have dy dx equals 3x squared over e to the 2y. Okay, circle the things that have to move. This has to move here. This has to move here. Now notice if my dx is starting on the bottom, it's going to end up on the top. My e to the 2y starts off on the bottom. It's going to end up on the top. So I have e to the 2y dy equals 3x squared dx integral integral. Okay, my right side is easy, nice little power rule here. So I'm going to add 1 to x squared. I'm going to turn it into x to the 3. Then I divide that 3 with this 3. Now it's a 1 in the front plus c. Other side, however, I'm going to need u sub. Remember that if it was just e to the x, I can integrate that. Okay, but if it's e to the 2y, then I'm going to need u sub. So my u is going to be a 2y. What does that make my du? Well, the derivative is 2dy, which means that dy is du over 2. And so then when I come back to integrate this left side here, I'm going to have the integral of e to the u, because remember my 2y is now a u, and then my dy is now a du over 2. And then I can take that, whoop, put it to the front. So really, this is a half e to the u du on that side. Antiderivative of a half e to the u is a half e to the u again. Remember, e is its own antiderivative. That's the only function where the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, the integral of e to the x is e to the x. So from there, I have a half e to the 2y equals now, remember, free response. So you want to keep your equation going. You don't have to rewrite it every time, but make sure your notation is clear. So I'm just pulling this x cubed plus c down to the bottom. Next step, I'm going to times everything by 2. i got to get rid of this 1 half, so that's gone. e to the 2y equals, that's a 2x3 plus c. Nobody cares. We didn't know what it was, so we're leaving it as a plus c. Then from there, I need to ln both sides. Make sure that you ln that whole 2x3 plus c together. So my ln and my e cross out. I have 2y equals, and then this is the natural log of 2x cubed plus c. Okay, then my last step is to cancel out that 2 in the front. 2 uh, can be multiplied by a 1 half to cancel it out. So these guys cross out, and I have y equals 1 half natural log 2x cubed plus c. Okay, now remember this is my general solution. I need a particular solution. So if this is my general solution and I need a particular solution, I need an ordered pair. They gave it to me right here. It says my solution has to satisfy that f of zero is a half. So I would say, okay, well then a half needs to be the answer when I plug in A zero. So a half needs to be the answer when I plug in a zero. Okay, well, let's see what happens there. So I have a half on both sides, ln. Okay, uh, zero cubed is zero times two is zero. So really, that's just the ln of c. Well, then I can times everything by two. Remember, we're trying to solve for c here. So half of two is one. Half of two here makes that an ln c. And then how do I cancel out an ln? Okay, don't make it harder than it is. You know how to do that. You're just going to E both sides. And when I E the ln, whoosh, whoosh, those are gone. C equals E to the 1. Well, then C is just E. 
So my particular solution is one half natural log two x cubed plus the letter E. Okay, and then remember, we wanna really try not to box our answers. I know I do that sometimes. Okay, but I would really try not to do that. Okay, that's your particular solution. Okay. All right, part B says, find the domain and range of the function found in part A. Okay, so um, I don't know if you know what the graph of ln looks like, okay, but ln x and e to the x, so here's e to the x, here's ln x. Okay, so I want you to think about, for e, my graph is never negative, right? And it never touches zero. Well, then that's the same for ln. ln is going to go down and down and down and down, but it's never going to actually touch this. So the domain for logs is always greater than zero. Oops, you can't see that. Uh, greater than zero strictly, not greater than or equal to because it never actually touches. Now, keep in mind that applies to this whole chunk of stuff here in the middle. So I would say, okay, well, if I have 2x cubed plus e, that has to be greater than zero. So for my domain, uh, let's see part b here for my domain it would be that 2x cubed plus e must be greater than zero because i cannot take the log of zero i cannot take the log of anything negative okay and then you can solve it if you want to i wouldn't um, especially since multiple choice is not included on your exam anymore i just wouldn't worry about that okay then think about for a uh, natural log function what's your range well this side's going up forever this side's going down forever. So that basically means that your range is just gonna be all real numbers. Okay, or if you prefer the little symbol like that, you could do that too, okay? Um, one other really good question here um, that they could have asked you, which they don't, would be kind of like that last one, where is the slope negative? So think about your equation up here for a second. If your dy dx is 3x squared over e to the 2y, can that ever be negative? Okay, I want you to just think about that for a second. 3x squared, what's that? Always positive. Okay, e to the 2y, what's that? Always positive. Okay, so think about it. If I divide two things that are always positive, this slope is always going to be positive, no matter what. Okay? That was fun. Turn the page. All right, next one. It says, on the axis provided, sketch a slope field. Okay, so let's think about first our flat spots, then let's think about any undefined spots. So flat spots are what make it zero. Okay, so I'm looking at my equation and I see here that if I have a 2x on top, if x is zero, that's going to make it flat. So I'm going to go flat, flat, and then I'm like, oh, I don't see a dot there. Skip it. Flat, flat. Now let's talk about undefined slopes. Okay, what will make this undefined? Well, if I have a y on the bottom, that means that if y is zero, I need to leave that blank. So notice all three of these points here are blank for a reason. They're blank because I cannot find the slope at those values without getting a divide by zero, which is obviously not allowed. Okay. So from there, all I have to do is plug in the remaining points, sketch an appropriate slope. So this is one, one. This is one, two. So we're plugging in right here. So if I do negative 2 times x over y, that'd be negative 2 times x over y. Okay, well, the 2's cross out. I just get negative 1. Remember, perfect diagonal for a uh, negative 1 slope. Okay, now we're plugging in here. I want negative 2 times x, which is 1, over y, which is 1. Well, negative 2 divided by 1, that's a negative 2 slope. That should be a little bit steeper. Let's come over here to these guys. So this is negative one, two. This is negative one, one. We're plugging into our formula here. 
So it's negative two times x over two. Well, the twos still cross out, but what else crosses out? Not only do my twos cancel, but my negatives cancel to where instead of getting a minus one like I did here, I get a positive one, which is uphill, perfect diagonal. Okay, now let's do negative one, one here. I'm gonna have negative two times x, which is a negative one, divided by y, which is a positive one. My negatives are gonna cancel out, but my overall slope is gonna be a positive two, so uphill. Okay, four more points left. Uh, this is positive one, negative one, and positive one, negative two. So let's find the slope. So have negative two times x, which is a one, divided by y, which is a negative one, Okay, my negatives cancel out, I end up with a slope of positive two, so that should be kind of uphill. Come down here, negative two times x divided by y. Negative twos cross out, I get a positive one slope. And then remember, it's all relative. This should be steeper than that. Okay, it doesn't have to look perfect, but it should be, you know, kind of like if this is a one, that should be steeper if it's a two. Okay, last two points, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative two. Uh, plug it in, negative two times x is a negative one divided by negative one. Okay, these cross out. And now actually notice how many negatives we have here. I have a negative on the two, a negative on the x coordinate and a negative on the y coordinate. That means that two of these can cross out, but my result is gonna come out negative, specifically negative two. And then for my last one here, negative two times negative one, divided by negative two. These can cross out, but my slope is still a negative one. Got it? All right, so part A is done. Part B, write an equation for the line tangent to the graph at one negative one, then use it to approximate. Okay, so remember, for an equation of a tangent line, I need a point and I need a slope. Now, my point is one, negative one. They gave me that right here, okay? But I also need a slope, and remember that the way that you find slope is you do the dy dx at the point that they gave you. Okay, remember how to um, do your notation on that. So I do dy dx line, and then the point that I'm plugging in. So one negative one is here, and remember we got positive two. Okay, I'm just looking at my graph here. I can see what I got when I did one negative one, okay? So that means that the equation of my tangent line is gonna be y plus one, slope is two, x minus one. And then from there, we're ready to plug in the decimal that they gave me. They want me to plug in 1.1. So I would have y plus one equals two times 1.1 minus one is 0.1. And then I can just minus this one across. So y equals, that's a 0.2 minus one. And remember guys, I would just leave it. It's not worth it to make a mistake. You're wasting time doing something you don't have to do, especially since multiple choices pulled off the exam this year. Okay, part C. Find d squared y dx squared in terms of x and y. That is the second derivative. Okay, then determine whether your answer in part b is over or under the actual value. So let's start with the second derivative. If dy dx is negative 2x over y, that is going to need quotient rule. So let's review how that looks just real quick. You're going to do your high and your ho. So the high for that is negative 2x. The ho for that is just a y. Well, then the derivative of negative 2x is negative 2. The derivative of y is dy dx. Oops, you can't see that. Okay, so let's write our second derivative. So I have negative 2x, derivative is negative 2 y derivative is dy dx. Let's write our d squared y dx squared. So I'm going to come back over to the left side of my page here. Okay, so d squared y dx squared equals, remember that it's ho d high minus high d ho. So ho d high is y times negative 2 
minus hi d ho is going to be negative 2x times dy dx. And then over ho squared is y squared. Now, the one thing I want to point out here is that your quotient rule is ho d high minus hi d ho. So if I'm minusing a negative 2x here, hopefully you can see that that really just needs to be a plus, I would say, just to make it not as confusing. So negative 2y plus 2x over y squared. Now, let's talk about this term right here. Okay, I cannot leave that a dy dx because it says my derivative needs to be in terms of x and y. That means other than numbers, I can only have x's and y's. So d's are not allowed, dy dx's aren't allowed. So think about my substitution for that is that dy dx is really a negative 2x over y. Okay, and then I could just leave it like that. Now, the other part of the question that they ask you, okay, so this part is done. Find the second derivative, check. Then it says, determine whether your answer was over or under the actual value. Okay, remember that that needs concavity. So I have my formula right here. All I have to do is plug in my point and then see what happens. So uh, d squared y dx squared at my point, which was 1, negative 1. Okay, uh, we're going to plug into this. So it'd be negative 2y plus 2x. And then notice I could find dy dx, but I already did it up here. So instead of me plugging into this formula again, I remember that the slope was just a 2. And then divide by y squared, which is a negative 1 squared. Well, then this is a positive 2 plus 4 divide by negative 1 squared. 2 plus 4 divided by this is a positive 1 then now because negative 1 squared comes out positive. That's greater than 0. Okay, so let's talk about what does that mean. Then y has to be concave up or down. Then y is concave. Well, if it was greater than 0, it's concave up around 1, negative 1, meaning, okay, now let's draw our little picture here. So if it's concave up, where's my tangent line going to fall? If I draw it on, my tangent line is going to fall under. So why is concave up around 1, negative 1? Meaning tangent line is underestimate. meaning that it's under the actual value, okay? All right, let's go to part D. Okay, so it says find the particular solution. Okay, so we've done that before. Um, remember, we need to separate. So if I'm looking at this as my dy dx uh, from the initial part of the question, that means these two things are both going to have to move. Okay, so all of this was part C. So if dy dx is negative 2x over y, then my y needs to move here, my dx needs to move here. So I'm going to have y dy and then negative 2x dx and then integral, integral. Okay, no u sub here, that's nice. So I have 1 half y squared. Because remember, I add 1 and then I divide. So I'd add 1, get 2 for the power, then divide by 2. And then over here, x becomes squared. But then when I divide the 2 on the negative 2, I just get a negative 1 plus c. Solving for y, we're going to multiply by 2. So I have y squared equals. Uh, this is a negative 2x squared. Plus, and then remember, C can stay the same. You already didn't know what C is, so you don't have to worry about changing it. Okay? Then from there, Y equals plus or minus the square root of negative 2X squared plus C. Okay, then remember, it told me that my point passed through 1, negative 1. So that's how I'm going to get from, remember, this is a general solution to a particular solution is using that ordered pair. So I would say negative 1 is the answer. Uh, and then my x here was a 1. Okay. And remember, guys, this number is the x. 
this number is the y. Okay, so I know that can be confusing, but x is always the one that's in the parentheses. Okay, so negative one is the answer when I plug in a one. Okay, so negative one equals, I'm choosing the negative from the other side. Negative two times one is a negative two plus c. Okay, after I choose the negative, I'm gonna square both sides. And remember that when you square a negative one, it turns to a positive one. When you square a negative square root, they both cancel out and you just get negative two plus c. Then add that two across and c has to be three. So y equals the square root of negative two x squared plus three. Look good? Particular solution. Hmm, is it though? Is it? <laughs> no. Okay, because remember, what did I choose at this point? I had to choose the plus or the minus. I chose the minus. Okay, so don't forget that. Okay, last part of the question for that. State the domain of the particular solution. So remember the question we did yesterday, natural logs, your stuff in the middle has to be greater than zero. For a square root, the only thing you can't square root are things that are negative. So that means that the stuff in the middle, the negative 2x squared plus 3, it just has to be greater than or equal to 0. That would be your domain. Okay, and then remember, if this were multiple choice, you might have to solve that. But hallelujah, okay, you don't have to do it, so lucky you. All right, go ahead and turn the page, please. Keep on trucking here. Uh, looks like we have, ooh, just one left, great. All right, so take a look at your equation here. Consider the differential equation. Uh, sketch the slope field. Uh, let's look for our flat spots first, just because it gives us less work to do. So I'm going to have zero slopes. Okay, what would x have to be? Well, x would have to be zero. Or what could y be? Well, y minus one means y could be one. Okay, then remember, uh, this is a hoi horizontal line. Horizontal zero slope, y equals. So horizontal line at one. And then x equals zero is a vux. I don't know if your uh, algebra one teachers taught you that. Okay, but that's a vertical line with an undefined slope at x equals zero. So that means I'd be going down that. Okay, which means that I only have a couple of points left that I would have to do the slope at. Okay, so I would do it for these two, these two, and these two. Okay, and you just plug those order pairs in. Um, so let's say we're doing this guy is one zero. This is one two. This is one three. Notice I skipped this guy because I know it comes out flat. Well, then it'd be one squared times zero minus one. Well, that's a negative one. And then I'd come up here. One squared times two times one. Well, that's one times one. That's a slope of one. Then I go up one, one squared times three minus one. Well, that's a slope of two. And then notice that a two slope should be obviously more steep than a one slope. Okay, moving over here. Have negative one squared times zero minus one. Well, negative one squared is positive one, zero minus one is negative one, multiply those out, negative one. And then I notice, ah, they match. Okay, negative one squared, two minus one. Well, that's a positive one, that's a positive one. Ah, they match. Okay, well then they're gonna match there too, right? Okay, then it says, there is a horizontal line with the equation y equals c that satisfies this differential equation. Okay, so I want you to think about horizontal line. Okay, that's a zero slope. Okay, they're saying there's a horizontal line with a zero slope. Okay, what does the C have to be? Okay, well, look at our equation. It was Y equals one. So if they're wanting to know what C is, then C is one. So Y equals one or something like that, right? Okay, they're just asking you what Y value that if Y is that number will make the slope zero, it would be one. All right, 
Part C, describe all the points for which the slopes are positive. Okay, well, if I want the slopes to be positive, then I want dy dx, which is x squared y minus 1, to be greater than 0. Right? I want the slopes to be positive. Okay, well, then just look at that equation and look for the part that doesn't count. Okay, x squared is always positive. So if x squared is always positive... then I really only care about if y minus 1 is greater than 0. And then remember, if you wanted to solve that fine, you could add the 1 across. Okay, you could have written it like this, uh, y greater than 1. Okay, because remember, you could just like take that minus 1 and add it across. But you don't have to do that, so I would recommend just not doing it. Okay, last question. Find the particular solution with the initial condition f of 0 equals 6. Let's do it. So it says dy dx equals x squared y minus 1. Okay, well, x squared is going to stay minus 1 and it's going to go. And when it goes to the other side, remember, it has to end up on the bottom. Okay, then my x squared is going to stay where it's at, but my dx is going to come and join it then we're ready to integrate and integrate. Now, I hope you're noticing the pattern on these. A lot of the times, one of the sides is really easy. For example, here, I can integrate that. Okay, add one, x is to the three. Divide by three, now it's a one-third plus c. But on the left side, I'm gonna need a special method. Okay, I'm gonna need u substitution. Okay, and the reason that I need u substitution is because it's not just 1 over y, it's 1 over y minus 1. So u is y minus 1. That means that du is the derivative of that. Well, the derivative of y is just a 1 dy, which means that dy is du over 1. Ready to do our integral. So it's 1 over u du, and then over 1, nobody cares about it. You can put it or not. Antiderivative of 1 over u is ln absolute value of u, which is then going to change to ln absolute value of y minus 1. Okay, then I'm just going to carry this down, 1 third x cubed plus c. Okay, next statement, I'm going to uh, e both sides. Okay, e and ln are going to cross out just like they always do. So these guys are going to be gone. My y minus 1 is going to come down out of the exponent. And then remember that this c is going to drop to the front so that it's that. Now, one more time. Remember, I have a plus or minus kind of built into that c because since I don't know what that constant is, it implies that it could be positive or negative. So if you want to put the plus minus, that's fine. But remember, you're going to have to pick one. Okay, then add your 1 across. So you have y equals c e to the one third x cubed plus one. Then we're choosing our point. So if I want f of zero to be six, okay, it tells me that right here. Then I would say, all right, well then six is the answer when I plug in zero. And then I can go through and solve that. So I'm gonna minus my one across. That's gonna give me five equals c and then if this is zero zero cubed times a third is zero that's an e to the zero and then c is automatically five okay but remember i only get my full points when i write the full solution so this is my general solution i want my particular solution so it would be 5e to the third x cubed plus one oops you can't see that Okay. All right. So remember your homework for this week, you have homework seven, which is on or homework eight, which is on integrals. Um, and then you have your progress checks all listed out on the website. You're doing three of them this week. Okay.